In this video we're going to look at graphing motion. We're going to cover a distance time graph as well as a speed time graph and the things that we can do with them. So firstly the distance time graph is exactly that. We graph distance as opposed to time and in this case time is the independent variable so it goes on the horizontal axis while distance, the dependent variable, goes on the vertical axis. We can then, from our distance time graph, use the information in it to calculate speed. So if I wanted to find the average speed for this journey, we know that speed equals distance divided by time. So if I looked at the final distance, which is 8 meters, and the final time, which is 45 meters, Distance divided by time, 8 divided by 45, gives me 0.18 metres per second. So that's the average speed of the journey. But what I can also do is find the instantaneous speed, so the speed that's happening at a particular point. So in this case, I'm going to look at the point from C to D. And we still use the formula speed equals distance over time, but we change it a little bit. We put this triangle in, and it's a Greek letter, but all it means is change. So rather than the total distance, we're looking at the change in distance over the change in time. And don't get too confused about this. It's quite easy to work out the change. If we look at the final distance of 8 metres and the starting distance of 6 metres, 8 minus 6 is 2 metres. So the change in distance is 2 metres. And similarly, we can look at the change in uh, time by going 45 minus 35 equals 10. So here, change in distance divided by change in time is 2 divided by 10 metres per second, or if we work it out, 0.2 metres per second. Now what you may have noticed there, when we were looking through it, looking at the change in distance divided by the change in time, is the same as looking at the rise divided by the run, which is something you might have noticed, uh, might have seen in maths, and it's called the gradient. So the speed is equal to the gradient of the line in a distance time graph. From the information that we get from our distance time graph, we can create a speed time graph, and this is a graph that maps speed with relation to time. So I've made this one from the first graph, and you can see that from 0 to 15 seconds here, we're traveling at 0.4 meters per second. Then from 15 to 35 seconds, we're stationary. And then from 35 to 45 seconds, we're then traveling at 0.2 meters per second. And that was the one that we worked out in the previous example. Now with the speed time graph, the area under the speed time graph is the distance that we've travelled. So if we look at this initial distance here, from 0 to 15 seconds, and in this case it's uh, distance equals velo uh, speed times time, uh, but area of a square is base times height. So we look at the speed, which is 0.4, and the time, which is 15 seconds, we times these two together, and we get 6 metres. So this is the distance we covered, 6 metres. And if we go and check with the distance time graph, we can look that at 15, uh, 15 seconds, yes, we had travelled 6 metres. In this video, we have looked at distance time graphs and calculating the gradient of distance time graphs to find instantaneous speed. Uh, we've looked at speed time graphs with speed in relation to time and calculating the total distance travelled by the area under the speed time graph.